To begin using Easy Line Renderer, find the Tools menu, Technobabble Games, Easy Line Renderer. The Easy Line Renderer tool will appear. Like any window in Unity, you can move it or dock it wherever you want. Let's dock it with the Inspector window. To create a new line, set the desired properties on the tool window. First, the line width can be adjusted using this slider up to one unit. Let's set it to about one quarter. Rounded end caps will round off the end points of the line, while rounded corners will round the angles created by every other point in the line. In the line coloring section, we will leave solid color selected for now. We can choose the line color using this color picker. Let's choose this blue color. Under technical properties, we can select our starting shape which determines the number of points the line will have. Selecting line will generate the minimum of two points. Shape size affects the size of the selected shape without changing the line's width. It will increase the distance between points. We will set the facing axis to Z for now. The name of the game object that will represent our line can be set here. Once set, we will create our first line renderer by clicking on the Create Line button. A line will appear in the scene with that given name. The object can also be seen in the hierarchy. Let's create another line. We'll make this one thinner with rounded end caps. We'll set a new color for this line to make it easier to see the difference. Set a new name. The second line appears. Let's look at the end of the new line. It is round and can be compared to the first line with a flat edge. The lines can be selected in the scene like any game object, and if I press the delete key, will be deleted from the scene. They can also be selected in the hierarchy and deleted, removing it from the scene. Let's demonstrate a different shape with rounded corners. Leave the coloring as solid. We will select triangle for our starting shape. Click on Create Line and a triangle appears in the scene. Let's look at one of the corners. The outside edge of point one is rounded. We can demonstrate the difference by creating a new line. We'll uncheck rounded corners and increase the line width. Select a new color. The new line is rendered under the previous line. If we look at point one again, you can see the difference. Like before, we can delete these objects or move them around the scene. Another coloring option is gradient. Selecting it will display two color pickers. Let's leave the start color as is and select a different end color. Change the shape to line. When we create the line, we see that the gradient starts with our start color at point one and ends with the end color. 
The other coloring type option is texture. Textures require a material. We'll use the demo stretch material. There are two modes, stretch and tile. This material works with the stretch mode. Create another line, and it shows up with the image stretched across the line. Let's demonstrate tile mode. We'll use the demo tile material. Switch the mode to tile. Let's make it a heptagon and increase the shape size to 4. Create the line, and you can see the tiled pattern. Let's discuss facing axis under technical properties. So far, every line has been set to Z. This is because the scene viewport is facing the Z axis. Let's see what a line facing the Y axis will look like. Set facing axis to Y. Change the starting shape to pentagon. Give the object a descriptive name and create the line. You will see the difference in this line. The line points along the y-axis in world space. Essentially, the line faces up. Let's make another unique line by changing some of the properties. We'll set it to gradient, check rounded end caps, leaving rounded corners checked too. Let's make the shape size bigger and set the facing axis to X. Call the object X. You can see this line appear facing the X axis in world space. At point 1, you can see where the gradient ends meet. This creates a visible edge to the colors. The last facing axis is face camera. This is the normal behavior for line renderers. Let me change a few properties to make the new line unique. It appears at first that the new line is facing the Z axis. As we pan our view, we see that there is no edge to the line. Compare that to the line we created earlier facing up. It faces our camera no matter what angle we choose. It's the same for our line facing the x-axis. The Easy Line Renderer is easy to use for someone with just a basic understanding of Unity. It is designed around parent and child objects. If you can add an object to a scene, add children to that object, and move them around in the scene, you already have the knowledge to use Easy Line Renderer. We are not limited to making preset shapes. With the cam game object expanded in the hierarchy, you can see that each point is a child object of cam. With the parent object selected, each point is labeled and has a handle on it in the scene. We can manipulate the shape of the line using these handles. Control or Command Z will undo any action in Unity. Let's select one of the child objects and look at the inspector. You can treat each point in the line like a separate game object, which, if you are familiar with Unity, you should be comfortable doing. As a game object, point 1 can be moved around the scene using the game object's handles, or in any other way 
game objects can be manipulated in Unity, such as the transform fields in the inspector. This is true for any point. It is necessary to maintain the parent-child hierarchy created by Easy Line Renderer. Deleting or moving a point outside of its parent will cause the point to stop functioning properly. If this happens, undo the action or move the game object back to its former place in the hierarchy. With the parent game object selected, in this case cam, the TB line renderer component is visible in the inspector. All lines created with Easy Line Renderer will have this component. Use this component to instantly change certain properties of the line. For example, the cam line has a gradient coloring the surface. You can see that this creates a hard-edged color difference where the first point in the line meets the segment after the last point. Let's match the start and end color properties to make a solid color. We can also open this loop. The ending point is here, the starting point is at point 1. Uncheck the close loop toggle. The segment connecting these points disappears. We can create paths that lead from one place to another. We can also adjust that line's width from a maximum width of one unit to a minimum of one one hundredth. Using this slider, you can watch the line change instantly in the scene view. We can click on another object in the scene. In this case, we've selected the object named Y. As expected, it has the same component as Cam and can be adjusted in a similar way. However, we cannot change any color properties because we set the object up as a texture. Only lines created with solid color or gradient line coloring properties can be changed here. If the appearance needs to be changed, properties for the attached material can be updated. But this is beyond our scope. However, changing the albedo texture is a simple way to change the image. There is a fold-out menu in the Shape Properties section. It starts collapsed because making changes here will reset changes you've made to the line shape. Let's say we move the ending point, then decide we want to make shape size bigger. Take note, the shape size is different from line width. Shape size determines the distance between points. Adjusting the shape size will reset the line to the original shape because it sets all the points to the same distance to the center of the object. If the shape is unintentionally altered, the reset shape button will set it back to the original shape without the need to adjust the shape size. Let's go back to the tool and take a look at custom lines. Custom lines are like shapes where points will be placed in the scene. But they don't provide a default shape. Let's demonstrate by first setting the desired properties for our new custom line. Let's reduce the points slightly to 8 and open the loop. Let me correct the name and create the line.
The placement of the points has been set somewhat randomly. Now is the time to set the points to the desired positions. We can drag these handles to move the points, but any of the previously mentioned methods are available to us. If we check the line renderer component in the inspector, it works just like before. You can close or open the loop, adjust the line width, and change the solid color to a gradient. However, we can't adjust the shape properties because there was never a shape to manipulate. And that's the basics on using the Easy Line Renderer. Hopefully, this was informative and gave you a good understanding of the tool.